how do we figure out what the one-to-one -one or the inverse is? Yes. I'm going to start with g of x. g of x, I can change that into y. g of x, f of x, q of x, r of x, all those, that's just the y coordinate. And then we flip-flop the x's and the y's, which is what you were saying, Shelby. Now go ahead and solve that for y. Is that what'd you get? I got the square root of x minus four plus a minus b. Okay. Anybody else? Let's share what they got. Okay. Well, let's work it out. What do we do first? Anybody? Yeah, I gotta subtract the four. The goal is to get y by itself, so I've got to isolate. The square root. So when I subtract 4, it looks like this. I still got to get that square root by itself. So what do I need to do? Divide by 2. Now I'm going to write this part down. When I divide by 2, I have to divide everything by 2. So that's one half x minus two. Now what? Yeah, I got to get rid of the square root. So my final answer should not have a square root in it. I need to get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. Now this is not the only way to do it, but all the answers will be equivalent. So I get 1 half x minus 2 squared equals y plus 3. Then what? Uh, I get you the square, you mean? Yeah. You can. You don't have to, though. But yes, you can. But I'm still trying to get y by itself. Just subtract the 3. Subtract the 3. So I can leave it like this. 1 half x minus 2 squared minus 3. Now, if you got uh, 1 fourth and then parentheses x minus 4 squared and then minus 3, that's the same thing. There's lots of different ways to do this problem. It just depends on when you squared it. Okay, can't leave it as y. So this one was g of x, so I say it's g inverse of x. And that's 1 half x minus 2 squared minus 3. Thing. 
thing we got to talk about. The original one, if I graphed it, g of x is, it goes left 3 and up 4. And it does, you know, something like that, right? That's g of x. Notice the domain and the range is restricted. It doesn't go all the way across the graph. And so the domain is going to be restricted for this one too. So I know that this point is negative 3, 4. So I would go 4, negative 3. And it would basically do the same thing, only it would look kind of like that. I may have curved that a little bit much. But notice, I don't have anything over here to the left of this x. So I needed to say here, which is why I left this big space, that x is greater than or equal to 4. Another way to tell that is to look inside here. Because it was under a square root to begin with, I know what's in the square has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if I solve that, multiply by two on both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to four. So I don't care if you do it by the graph that I did or if you take what's inside that squared and know that it's got to be greater than or equal to zero just like under square root it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Either way. And there aren't many of those that turn out like that, but I wanted to make sure I showed you one. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, grab pass, sign out. Okay, so moving on to the next page. And it's giving us g of x, and we're going to find g inverse of x. And that's what we've been doing. First step is to replace g of x with y. Kendrick, what do I do now? How do I get the x by, oh, no. What do I do once I replace the g of x with y? Uh, what's an inverse do? For example, back up here, how did I find the inverse? This is one, how did I get that? Flip flop and what? There you go. So that's what you gotta do here. You flip flop the X and the Y. So what's it gonna look like? What's it gonna say, Kendrick? Instead of Y, you'd put no, not 3x. You're just flip-flopping the x and the y. So instead of y, I put x, yes, equals 3. And instead of the x, I put, there you go. That is a very common mistake, so I'm actually glad that happened. People always want to put the thing that's with the x on the other side. You only flip-flop the letters x's and y's. That's it. Now what do we do, Jose? Yep. Trying to solve for y. So I multiply both sides by 2. 